Now, before we get into this video, I'd like to take a moment to apologize. I messed up. In the previous video, when talking about multiple limits, I accidentally wrote the notation wrong in the editing software. The plus slash minus symbols are meant to be on the value it's approaching, rather than on x itself. Well, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Remember the gradient of a linear equation? It's calculated by rise over run, notated by the delta symbol. Remember, however, that was a linear equation. Could we perform this gradient on nonlinear functions? Like, let's take the standard parabola of x squared equals y. Could we somehow find the gradient of this function? What does the gradient of a curve even mean? Well, let's take what we do know. The rise can be rewritten as a function of x plus delta x minus the function of x. Okay, better. The function applies for nonlinear relations, and it works for every single x input on the graph. Using this, we can get a better idea of the graph. This is called linearization, expressing a nonlinear approximation in the form of a linear slope. But no matter how small our delta x variable gets, it's still an approximation. Is there a way to calculate the change at a point? The instantaneous change? What? How can change be instantaneous when change is defined as a difference occurring through time? How do we find the change at delta x equals zero? On one hand, it should be zero, since the input hasn't changed. But what if we actually computed it? Well, we can't divide by zero, so it seems like we're hopeless. But remember the last video? We actually now have the ability to complete this division. We can take the limit of this gradient formula as delta x approaches zero. To signify this leap from displacement into calculus, we replace the delta x with dx. We did it. We found the formula for the gradient of a curve. Um, what does it actually do? Well, let's use an example and put the standard parabola through this operation. We can apply the functions, collect the terms, divide by dx, and shrink the remaining dx to zero, where we are left with 2x. This means that the gradient of any x position is equal to double its x position. As an example, at the position x equals 2, its gradient is 4, and at the position x equals 4, its gradient is 8. The previous example of finding the gradient of the curve is what we call taking the derivative of a function. So 2x is the derivative of x squared. The process used for finding the derivative is called differentiation. So when we apply this formula, we are differentiating the function. If you pay closer attention, we can also see that the derivative is always tangential to the original curve. Well, this seems really hard, we need to plug the function into this differential formula every time and evaluate the limit repeatedly. Well, not necessarily. There are things called derivative rules, pre-established rules so you don't need to differentiate every time. The previous parabola uses what we know as the power rule. It essentially states that x to the n has a derivative of n x to the n minus 1. Substitute n equals 2, and it checks out perfectly. Just like every mathematical rule, however, you need proof. Most proofs of the power rule come in geometric forms. As an example, take a square with length x, and increase the x by an arbitrarily small amount, dx. This creates three new shapes, two rectangles and one square. As we shrink dx to zero, it completely erases the dx squared and turns the two rectangles into two two-dimensional lengths of x, which add up to 2x. Now, to end this video, we're going to touch on a strangely confusing part of calculus, notation. For this video, we just notated d over dx, meaning we take the derivative with respect to x, or observing the change with a small nudge to dx. 
In certain cases, however, it could be easier to notate it with a prime mark in the fx, indicating that it is the derivative of the original fx. This is called Lagrange notation, and the one we used in the video was called Lebine's notation. Both of them mean the same thing, but it's useful to have two different forms of notation, especially later down the line, as they both contribute to more complex differentiation. So, recap time. We went over how to calculate the gradient of a curve, did an example question, and touched on the power rule of differentiation. If you want to find out about the other derivative rules, they will be in future videos and in the description of this video. So that's the second episode of Calculus in a Nutshell. And just like that when I had given up all hope, I said nope. There's just one way to find that slope, and so now I, I will derive. Find the derivative of x position with respect to time.